but I, I want to point to um, every single line in this story and how it's propaganda. So be on guard. Cotter, who is now 32, will be back in the court of Queen's Bench in Edmonton Thursday to apply for changes to his bail conditions, which were imposed while he appeals war crimes convictions by a U.S. military conviction, commission. I should remind you that Cotter pled guilty. He gave a detailed description of the war crimes he committed, including that he got paid a bounty for killing Americans that he was trained in things like poisoning people, that he planted IEDs of the type that killed Canadian soldiers. Omar Khadr freely confessed to all of this, and we know it was freely confessed, because his very zealous lawyers approved every word of it. You could see their signatures on the page. They would never have approved of him making a false confession. That would be a violation of their legal ethics. They wouldn't do that. So now he's appealing his conviction after having given graphic details of exactly what he did. <laughs> Gee, it's almost like you can't trust a terrorist these days. I mean, if you can't trust a murderer to keep a written promise, what's the world coming to these days, eh? Now, uh, let me read some more here. An affidavit by Cotter filed with the court says the impact of his bail conditions are mainly psychological, a daily reminder of what he went through. I feel like the indefinite and potentially endless detention that I suffered in Guantanamo Bay is continuing, he wrote. I hope that there will be some end to this process, but there is none in sight. Oh, he's so poor, isn't he? The poor dear. He really is the victim here, isn't he? Not Christopher Spear, the man he murdered. Not Tabitha Spear, Christopher's widow. Not their two fatherless kids, Taryn and Tanner. You see, Omar Khadr... That's a daily reminder of Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, he, he's not there anymore. He's, he's been out for almost a decade. Uh, but he's the real victim. Won't you have pity on him? Just don't mention the family he destroyed. Omar Khadr, uh, let me keep reading here. Khadr spent years in U.S. detention at Guantanamo Bay after he was caught when he was 15 and accused of tossing a grenade that killed Special Forces soldier Christopher Spear at a militant compound in Afghanistan in 2002. I love that word militant. They just can't say terrorist, can they? Yeah, it is true. He was accused of tossing a grenade that killed Spear. Glad they finally mentioned him. And he was also convicted of it. And he also confessed to it. It really wasn't a difficult conviction. When the U.S. seized Cotter, they also seized these home movies of him making IED explosives. There he is. And posing with, that's a machine gun behind him, by the way. Those baskets are IEDs. So yeah, he was accused and he was convicted. Would you ever see the media saying Paul Bernardo was accused of killing people, but not mentioning that he was convicted? Um, and they, they just don't use the word murder, do they? They say killed. Let me read some more. He says in his affidavit that he would, be, he would like to be able to speak on the phone or over Skype to his sister, Zainab Khadr. He is also asking to perform the Hajj, a pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, which is a mandatory religious duty for Muslims once in their lifetime. Oh, Zainab Khadr, his sister. She's a terrorist lover, too. She loves the murder of infidels, and unlike Omar Khadr, she doesn't keep quiet about it. She just, she just lets it rip. Three of his friends who were with him had been killed. He was the only sole survivor. What did you expect him to do? Why is it? Why does nobody say you killed three of his friends? Why does everybody say he killed an American soldier? Big deal. Yeah, what a sweetheart. It's a small world, though. That terrorist lover um, hooked up with this terrorist lover on the right. Um, he's also a huge criminal. His name is Joshua Boyle. He used to be married to Zainab Khadr. Did you know that? And then he took this woman, his subsequent wife, to Afghanistan where this woman was raped by the Taliban. These are just the best people, aren't they? What's so weird here is that Justin Trudeau had a secret meeting with, with uh, the Boyles when they got back from Afghanistan. It was a secret. It only came to light when Boyle tweeted this tweet about it. And, and he said, um, incidentally, not our first meeting with Justin Trudeau. That was in 06 in Toronto over other common interests. Ha ha. Isn't that odd? But don't you worry. Canada's tenacious media party will get right on that loose end. You can be sure that the CBC will ask Trudeau about what he met with Cotter's brother-in-law about 
as soon as they asked Trudeau about his own sexual assault on Rose Knight, that reporter in Crest, NBC, a few years back, the New York Times reported on that. The CBC, not so much. Look, the Canadian media knows who butters that bread these days. They're not going to ask Trudeau about what he met Joshua Boyle about back in 06. That's an excerpt from my daily show, the Ezra Levant Show, weekdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. Every day I do a monologue, interview a guest, and read my fan mail and my hate mail. To subscribe, go to therebel.media slash shows.